Welcome back to another Satisfactory Update 5 video and on this one we're going to be talking about the basic manifold and the smart manifold. So sit back, relax, and let's jump into it. In one of my previous tips videos we talked about the manifold versus the load balancing distribution of items. Well this time we're going to kind of take it a little bit one step further here because I used for the manifold example I used just a basic manifold these are just standard splitters in here where there was basically no real control over how the items were being fed into the smelters we've got here so we're still using our pure iron node that we've got over here with a mark 3 conveyor on it so we got 480 items to here and so basically like I explained the last time with this manifold is we have 240 items that are feeding in and then it's equally split between your left side and the center output so this is getting 120 and this is getting 120 items so on and so forth down the line this one then splits again this is getting 60 items this is getting 60 items so on and so forth as it splits along now once the first one fills up then of course it will only be requiring its 30 items per minute and the remainder of the materials will go into this first splitter and split equally between the overflow side and the feed side. So eventually we get to a point where everything is filled and all of these are working at 100% efficiency. But there's a better way that this could be done that's done a little bit more end game because this is where you get into your smart splitters or programmable splitters so i'm using in this example the programmable splitter i've got them all set up in here and basically the way this is configured is the first splitter we have the input is coming in on this side so the center channel is outputting iron ore into this smelter to make iron ingots once this is full so this is going to get all 240 items into here once this is full then the overflow is ejected out the right side here and is dumped into this one and then we have this set up that of course it's feeding in from this side now so the left side is outputting all of the iron ore that it can take and then once this smelter has filled then the overflow kicks it into the next smelter. So none of these smelters down here will receive any items until the smelter to it, its immediate left here or it's the, you know, the first one in its chain is full. So it will fill, this is 100% a priority based. This one will fill first and only this one. Once it's full, items will split and go into this one once it's full, so on and so forth down the line. Meanwhile, these ones here are still gonna be able to take their 30 items per minute as required as they're getting consumed by the smelter. So I actually have not seen this in play. I haven't seen how it works. I have no idea what kind of a difference is going to happen on the output side here. I'm thinking Aside from this being like an equal distribution, I think this side might be a little bit like that. I'm just taking a guess here because we're going to get some smelters that are that are going to fire up sooner than these other ones. I want to think that this side here might be just a tiny bit more efficient initially where this side could take a bit especially once we get down to say these last three here waiting for them to fill up before it gets to a point where it can feed consistently 30 items per minute into this last smelter but that's the whole reason for this video is so that we can kind of see these two setups someone had mentioned in our comment uh, uh comment in the last video that i did uh comparing the manifold with the load balancer and they said, well, you should be using the programmable splitters. And I mean, justified, if it's early game, 
I mean, you only have access to splitters, so you're going to have to kind of wait until you get the smart splitters or programmable splitters. So this is kind of your only option for a manifold early game. But then when you get a little bit further along, yes, we can take advantage of these smarter technologies. But I have no idea what the difference is going to be between these two systems until we get it fired up and give it a test. So with that said, why don't we get things fired up here and see how these two systems are going to perform. So we are going to hook this up here right now. And as you can see on the left hand side here with the standard splitter formation, we've had a few of the smelters click on, even one at the end. They're all kind of trickling on and off as they go. But on this first one here, just the first smelter is loading, but boom, it's full. We are now filling the second smelter and only the second smelter. Nothing is going down the line. Once this second smelter reaches full, boom, it'll go on to the third one. But what does this mean on the output here right now? So let's go take a quick look and have a look see at our output. This here is the standard. So we're sitting at 86, 88, 89, 90. That's where we're at right now for how many ingots we've smelted. This side, we've only done 40. So, so far, this side has been significantly more efficient. Well, I wouldn't even say significantly, but at least almost double the efficiency right now for the initial startup on this. But it'll be interesting to see what happens once this system has completely filled. This one here on this side really does take a long time for all of the smelters to actually get to a point where they never shut off. Where this one here is just systematically working through each individual smelter. We're on smelter four now filling, and I know that this is getting more than the 30 items per minute. So it's gonna fill up relatively quick compared to, okay, let's look here right now. This has got 30 items in it. What is in smelter four at this end? One, two, three, four. This has only got six in it on this end. So already smelter four is going to be, you know, well fed and ready to go for anything. We're up to almost uh, 70, we're at 70 items now in this smelter, where I guarantee you uh, number four down here, we're at 10. So it's taking a lot longer for each of these to actually get to a point. So these ones down here, they're gonna be turning on and off and on and off like crazy. Where we're now working on, what is it? Number five here now is filling up and it's starting to fill up at a pretty good clip. But where are we at on output? Let's go back and just double check on the output on these. So we've had three, almost four stacks over here. We're at two and a half now. So things seem to be catching up on this side because it was almost like a half split, right? Well, we're almost at three stacks here and we are starting our fifth stack on this side. So we're just gonna kind of let this play out here for a little bit and see what happens. This side here, we still have some of these turning on and off. That one's on, this one's off. That one went off, now the third one from the end has gone off. Right here, we are all green on this side. We're still three off at this end, but we are, you know, five green over here. And this is almost full. We're gonna be clicking onto the sixth one here. Any second, wow, it's actually gonna be turning on here right about, I'm gonna say now. It should be turning, there we go. The first one is now fed in. And I guarantee you, okay, this is getting all of the materials it needs on this one. Nothing's going to shoot down to these other two until this one's full. So you can see how things, it, it makes each of these smelters maybe more efficient than we're still struggling down here with various smelters turning on and off. These last three are kind of on and off like you wouldn't believe where Right now, we only have two off on this side. So does that mean we're catching up on the efficiency here? Let's go now and double check again. This one here, we are at six, almost seven stacks. Over here, we are at five 
and almost six stacks. We're working at it. I'd say this side might be catching up just slightly over here. So we're going to kind of let this play out. As soon as this last smelter down here fills up, we'll come back as soon as this last one fills up, and then we'll see where things are going. All right, so we're just going to take a quick little minute here. This seventh smelter has just turned on and it is starting to build its inventory and all seven of these are running at 100% efficiency. Nothing's happening at this one. Let's have a look at what's happening down at this end here. We still have these last two smelters clicking on and off randomly because this isn't full yet. This isn't full yet. This one is full. So it looks like the first four on this side have completely filled, but we're not there on five, six, seven, and eight. Well, I mean, we're barely keeping up on these last two. Where right now, these seven flying full bore. There's nothing stuttering on these seven. So let's have a look once eight starts actually putting out materials. Okay, so we have just reached 100% efficiency at this end, which means we're gonna start seeing some materials flying out at this one, and it should consistently keep going at 30 items per minute. So this will never get above one to one. It might flicker two to one, but this should always stay one to one here as these materials are flowing in. So we're 100% efficient on the right hand side. What's happening down at this end? Are we at the same? See, this here, this one is just turned off again. So we're still not quite at a point where we're 100% efficient. So does that mean that we're gonna start catching up here on these two? Oop, we're getting an auto save there, just hold on a second. So here we have got two complete rows done. On this side, we're about two stacks. We're, we're two stacks behind on this side versus this side. I'm not sure if it would be able to catch up. So maybe this is just slightly more efficient than what this is. But as these do turn on and you're consuming your power, your power usage is a lot more consistent on this side where this here is always just going to be maintaining. It is actually just slightly gaining a little bit. Where, you know what? I'm pretty sure I did. I just see the second one here flicker a light. I saw another yellow light down here. Yeah, this one here. These two still are struggling as to who's the boss. As to what's full. So I think over a little bit of time here, maybe this side will end up winning out. Because if we flip down over here, let's have another quick look at this. We're at, what is that, 8, 16, 22, almost 23 stacks. 16, 17, 18, we're at 19 stacks on this side. So we're, we're getting there. I wanna say, like I know this side here now is running 100% efficient. This side here, is still flickering on its efficiency on two of the smelters. This one isn't quite there yet. And this one is, see, that was just off there again. It's off right now as it's waiting. Now it finally got its material. That means this one here is going to flicker off again for a second. It just went off again. So now it's waiting until it fires back up again. So these two still aren't at 100% efficiency where this side has made it to pure 100% efficiency. Now there's another benefit to running with these programmable splitters or you can use smart splitters, whichever uh, materials you have available to be able to make these. Here is the other benefit. This conveyor line that's here could be a mix of different items. So you can set your one output to say, say you have Iron ore, because the, uh, these conveyors here, they could, they could travel at 780 items per minute, the Mark V conveyors. So say you got a couple of normal nodes of different products, like say that's a, well, limestone's a bad example, but say we got a copper node and uh, a normal iron node. You could have them come through, combined in on one conveyor, 
and have them feed into here where this smelter will take iron and all overflow goes this way. Then you can have this smelter take copper and the overflow, so on and so forth down the line. So you can have multiple different types of products coming in on this system and these splitters are smart enough to know, okay, I'm going to feed iron into this one. I'm going to let everything else go by. And then I'm going to feed copper into this one, let everything else go by, so on and so forth down here. That is probably your biggest benefit of a programmable manifold versus the basic manifold. Efficiency-wise, let's have a look here and see now that things have been running here for a little bit. We are at three complete rows plus two and a quarter stacks. Three complete rows and we're just, we are at one stack. This side is slowly catching up. And it's because we still have not achieved 100% efficiency with the basic splitter setup. So that's your real benefit right there is you can smelt multiple different items you can set this up to be able to take iron ore, copper ore, caterium ore, have them all feed through, doing what they need to do, and the programmable splitters will be able to handle that for you without elaborate conveyor systems. It can all be run in on one conveyor system. And hopefully, once update six or go live, like say they, they uh, release it to full release on the next update, I'm not saying that that's what's happening, but if it does, well, maybe then they add tier nine and tier 10 and there is a Mark VI conveyor that can run at 1200 items or some ridiculous number of items that can run on the conveyor system so that you can condense this even more and have one streamlined system handling multiple different products going through various different types of processing. Now, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I wanted to see after the comment I saw on the on the last uh, load balancer versus manifold video that I did, I wanted to see these two types of manifolds going head to head because I've never seen the two of these working together to see what the difference is. And I'm, I'm really happy that we went through this process to kind of have a look at these and compare it. And if you've got the materials and it's later on in game, I recommend going with the programmable side, the smart manifold side versus the basic side. But early game, and you need to save some space, the basic side's always a great win. With that said, guys, reach down, hit this like button on the video. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Ring that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video. You can also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Terrace DWDC. With that said, you guys have a good one and we will see you in the next video.